It is a pleasure to introduce uh, Leo Bandafayas from the University of Michigan. He will tell us today about logarithmic corrections. So like the like Holt. Thanks so much. Yeah, I couldn't get this uh, into the page, so I'll start over here. So thanks for the invitation. It's always a pleasure to be to be back here. It's a great, great place. Uh, particularly for me, it's a like the, the birth, not birthplace, but uh, the cradle of uh, supergravity and all great things. All right, so my talk today is about uh, the entropy, the entropy of black holes. It's a good starting point if you want to understand quantum aspects of gravity. Um, this formula in particular is very universal and it, it contains information about the microscopic degrees of freedom if you have a quantum theory. So this is a good place to start. As I, as I just mentioned, if you if you have a, a candidate theory for, gra for, for quantum gravity, one of the first things that it has to do is to give you a microscopic description of, of entropy, not just as some, some thermodynamic quantity that, that is in the first law, but essentially as some counting of the degrees of freedom. Right? So that's, that's um, what, what we want to do. Of course, the string theory did this uh, for the first time in 96 in, in a famous paper by Strominger and Buff and then many, many others uh, therefore. But but this talk is sort of like in the same philosophy, but in the in the framework of the ads CFT correspondence. So instead of trying to describe the microstates of black holes using the brain, we are going to use a, a, a fairly conventional uh, field theory, a, a super conformal field theory. All right, so that's that's sort of where we are headed. Um, I, I don't know the audience completely. I know the, the supergravity uh, people, but uh, please uh, ask questions. Uh, I'm happy. I'm more interested in, in getting some points across than, than in just covering everything I have to say. So more specifically, more specifically, I want to study the, the entropy of black holes beyond the leading order. So the leading order is, is the, the formula we all know and love, which is a, a quarter of the area. Of the horizon. So I'm interested in going beyond and, and to explore a particular type of, of correction, which is this logarithmic correction. So the entropy as any quantum observable um, has its, its sort of three level piece, which, which we all know uh, from the 70s, but it but we also but it also has a, this particular type of corrections. These are logarithmic corrections and, and more specifically. I'm interested in the in this I'm more specific. More specifically, I'm interested in this coefficient here. Um, so I will I will go in in more details as to why that is the the, the coefficient that that is the best. Um, but, uh, but for now, uh, I can summarize the talk as being a talk where I will compute this number A from the field theory point of view and from the gravitational point of view and, and, and expect that, that I get agreement. All right, so, so let, oh, I cannot go back easily, sorry. So I wanted to emphasize, uh, and you will see in the talk it, that this, this correction, this kind of quantum corrections are really um, where the, the structure, the spectrum of the theory enters. So it's, it's a quantity that is not just like, like the leading piece, of course, it's very geometrical, very universal. You can get it in many, from many, many points of view. But this number here is the result of a one loop computation in which you will need to see things running in loops. And that's, that's fairly quantum. Uh, my, my, my favorite example, I see there are also some students, is that is the hydrogen atom. So when when I was in high school, I was in physics Olympiads and things like that. And so they teach you a little bit of advanced physics. So they convince you that you can understand the hydrogen atom by thinking that it's a planet moving around some other planet and uh, with momentum happen to be quantized. And you get the right numbers, right? You get the right numbers, but for the completely wrong physics. So this is one of the things that we want to explore here. We want to make sure that we get this number for the right reason, but more importantly, this number, right? This number will not be an accident. This number must come from things running in loops. Yes. Let me imagine a case where logarithmic term becomes larger than the 
like small area type of. I don't think so. So for a, for a solar size black hole, I, I have done the, the, the computation. This is 10 to the 77. So you expect that this is a whole day, you know, 10 to the 10, 10 to the two. So it's a, I don't, I don't view it in, in any realistic scenario that it's just a mathematically very clean uh, object. I, I'll, I'll, I'll try to make that fun, that precise. <clears throat> All right. So, so these, these coefficients, again, they are important because they are determined, completely determined by the, not necessarily massless, but the, by the very low energy spectrum of your gravitational theory. Um, they are insensitive to the UV completion. I will show you this also in, in one computation. So they are a very good uh, litmus test. So if you come with your UV complete theory and you tell me I did my microstate computation and here's my formula, I tell you, I ask you, what is your log? And if, if your log does not agree with the graph, with the macroscopic gravity determined log, then that, that is not correct. So I'll, I'll, that's why- oh, How low is low? Sorry? How low is low? When you say it doesn't have to be masses, but low mass. All right, so so in, in, in asymptotically flat space is low mass. In, in asymptotically ADS, I need, um, I need conformal dimensions that are, that are not of the, the below the, the ADS scale. Um, this is again. This is a, there's a venerated tradition in string theory to look for this for this um, coefficients. I'm not the first one. So, Sen and collaborators check that the coefficient agrees with the string theory computation for for a large class of black holes, including uh, Strominger and Buffa. And this was there was a, actually a framework developed to to do this computation. So I will maybe touch on that. It has been used also to to discuss. Uh, microscopic realization of curved CFT to compute in, in the context of ADS CFT, but to compute the free energy of certain theories. I will explain a little bit more. And my goal is to continue in this list and add this line about black holes. All right, so here's my outline. I, I want to, I, first I will tell you how to compute this number in field theory, in the field theory that is relevant for this black hole. This is a three dimensional N equal to Chen Simon matter theory, and I want to compute beyond large, large n, so I want to make sure that I get this coefficient in that computation. Uh, then I will go and show you how to do it in for, for this, when these black holes are embedded in 11 dimensional supergravity, this is the dual ads -CFT pair. I will compute then this coefficient, um, and then of course I will compare. So I will make some remarks about the quantum entropy formula, because it was, uh, the formula introduced by Ashok Sen to compute these log corrections in asymptotically flat space. And it does require some modifications in the context of asymptotically ADS black holes. So I will uh, clarify that. Then um, I talk about logarithmic correction to 4D n equal to gauge supergravity to sort of take a, a bottom-up approach or a bottom-up perspective on these uh, M theoretic computations. Um, then if I have time, I will talk about the superconformal index of n equal four super young mills. That's sort of the, the poster child example of ADS-CFT. Um, but it, I'll talk about that and, and tell you how uh, a similar computation can be done using CURS-CFT uh, of the logarithmic correction, but in a slightly different regime. Then I, I will conclude. All right, so, so the ABGM theory, so I'm, as I said, as I more or less explained the setup, I have a, 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 a field theory to which I want to compute um, some partition function that will be responsible for the entropy of the dual black hole. But for now, I will just tell you how to do this computation in field theory. Okay, the field theory in, in question is this ABGM theory. Um, it's a chern simon theory with two gauge groups, UN and UN, and they have chern simon level K and minus K. And there's also matter in by fundamental representation. So this is a this is the canonical way to represent this theory. So these are the two gauge groups with the levels, and then there are fields A1, A2. They are anti-fundamental and fundamental, and B1, B2 are, are the opposite. So this is the matter content. The theory has a large amount of supersymmetry depending on, on the values of k. For very small k, um, it has even more. It has an equal a supersymmetry. And these are the global symmetries. So this theory, okay, maybe maybe it looks uh, too decorated to you, but this is essentially a Chen Simon theory, things that condensed matter people know and love and use for uh, quantum hole effect, etc. So it's just that it has some amount of supersymmetry, it has some matter fields, but it's a kind of degree of freedom that we are uh, quite familiar with. 
Uh, the object that I'm interested in computing is, is the topologically twisted index. So it is essentially, so, so let's look at this piece by piece. If you look at this piece first, e to the minus e beta h is just some partition function, something you compute in a subnet. The minus one to the f is because, um, so you want to now count fermions and bosons uh, with different sign. This is a way to take advantage of supersymmetry. And then there are global symmetries, so I can put chemical potentials uh, to weight in, in, in that regard as well. All right, so it's a theory that counts half BPS states annihilated by Q. Q is the supercharge. The Hamiltonian in this supersymmetric theories is just the anti-commutator of, of one of the supercharges. And um, so this is the, the Hamiltonian description that, that should give you a prescription of, of what I'm computing. But the actual way of computing or the simpler way of computing is to, to turn this problem into a, into a Lagrangian problem and then compute the partition function representing this quantity. For that, you need S1 cross S2, okay. uh, some topological twist that correspond to the charges that you can put. Uh, but, but this is, again, this is now uh, a, a slightly different computation, but new technology has, has been developed recently that allows us to compute this exactly. So I'll, I'll show you a few steps of, of this computation as well. Can you remind us the connection between this object and the entropy you are interested in? Right. So, so I, I, I will, I will show that the, this is the partition function. I will log of the free energy. Uh, sorry, log of the partition function will be the free energy, and that's what I'm going to use to compute the entropy. Any other question? Okay. So, so I, I said I want to do it using local, supersymmetric localization. So this is the background S1, S2. And then there's some background field. This is required for supersymmetry. And, um, and, and okay, so the partition function depend on N1 and NA are the fluxes, the magnetic fluxes on S2. And these, these are the holonomies, of, sorry, the fugacities of, of the global charges that I, that I introduced. So this is a, it's a fairly complicated computation. I, I don't want to do all the details. I, I refer you to the paper for details. But, uh, but I want to give you some idea that this is, um, that this is at the end that you can understand this. So by computing this using supersymmetry, you are essentially uh, boiling down the problem to a kind of free, free, free problem. And what you need to do is to understand what are the Lego pieces. So depending on, on your matter content, what your theory contains, uh, there will be contribution to the full partition function. So, sorry, sorry. Yes. can you go to the previous slide? Sure. So your Z basically depends often on Beta on the e two minus beta h or yes yes so so good that's a very good question so in principle it depends on beta but in practice uh, for this supersymmetric configuration some um it would be beta independent I see yes in in the yeah okay. so therefore all of this uh, log term comes from the kind of Euclidean uh, uh, calculation from the e two minus beta h or you know I'm talking about like a Gibbons Hawking derivation of A over four. So right. So so there's there's a subtlety. There you have to be a little bit more careful in using Gibbons Hawking for extremal black extremal black holes. Uh, but but there is a prescription that allows you to take the finite temperature black hole and go to the limit of zero temperature in a particular way. And that that also what we do. Good. So let, let me add because this is really something that is developing a lot right now, it's, it's ongoing. So there, there, there's now a, a, a revisiting of that. So, may, so there was a prescription that initiated by SEND. This is what I explained at the beginning. That prescription has always given the right answer. So it seems to be consistent. However, due to some advan advances in, um, in JT gravity, uh, people are questioning the way to take the limit. And there have been a few papers in the last month or two about taking the limit in, in, in some other different ways. The answer seems to be the same, except all the corrections that are not the ones that we're discussing here. But, but yeah, yeah, it's a good point. Um, I'd be happy to talk about that. Uh, you mean the corrections depend on how you take the limit? Is that what you mean? Depending on how you take the limit, there might be all the corrections to the log, not to the part that I'm computing, but there will be log in temperature, not log in the, in the area. Mm -hmm. There are corrections to log area and there are corrections as you take the temperature to zero, they can be locked in T and they can become dominant. So this is what people are discussing now. And it's quite interesting. I also was talking to Gabriel about some interest on computation that I think can be done. All right, oops. So I, I okay, so so essentially depending on the on the content in your theory, if you have 
gauge a vector multiplet or you have current multiplet, there, there will be terms that you need to add. So let me show you the final answer. So this is the final answer for this localization. It might look a little bit uh, convoluted, but let me. So there's a determinant, right? The determinant is because I went from, from one kind of um, variables to another kind. This, these are called the beta, this is the beta answer. So it, has, it, it borrows the name from condensed matter, but bear with me. So I change my coordinates, my free coordinates, so I get a determinant. And then what I see here, this I, I, I show you in the previous slide, this comes from vector multiple. There are two vector multiples, un cross un. So here you have, and then there, there are these by fundamental field, they contribute products. So this is essentially generalizations of, 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 of factorials, if you wish. They, they are of course more complicated, but that's essentially, you can think of this as putting all the Lego pieces of this supersymmetric theory. What is important is this summary that I have for you here. So if I, so in the previous formula, I had to find the beta, the beta answer solutions and put them back into the partition function. So here's what I, what I so if I give, given these chemical potentials and the variables are these uh, holonomies, this is my setup equation. It's a 2n by 2n algebraic system of equations. So if I solve these equations, I put them in my expression for C and I have an answer for the, my, for my topologically twisted index exact in N. So that's the power of, of this uh, of localization technique that it gives you an answer that is uh, almost free. Just put the, the different pieces of your partition function together and it is exact in N. Um, this is something that you can, uh, of course you can articulate to, uh, to a good undergrad student. So here my system, uh, help me solve this equation and, and have a numerical control, numerical control over this, this object for any end. Um, so when you solve this equation, you get, um, these are the solutions of the holonomies. There are two holonomies, two gauge groups, UN cross UN. This is one, one plot that, so the, the, the continuous line is of course the, the analytic uh, response answer, and this is uh, the, the numerical uh, value. So you can see that they agree very, very well. There are some issues at, the, at this corner, but other than that, this is this is very good agreement. Um, there is a, a time-tested way to, to look at this distribution of eigenvalues, which is you introduce, yes. By the, the analytic computation, you mean the, lar the strict large eigenvalues? Yeah, 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 of course, of course. Analytic means a subtle point, yes. All right. So there's an, a, better, a better way to think about this, and you have to think about eigenvalue distribution, then there's technology in matrix model uh, theory to, to discuss this. Uh, the important thing, uh, I, get, I well, it's hard to see the formula. I don't know. Well, okay, so I'll, I'll show you here again. So the, the, the leading in M piece gives you a formula like this. This is again the chemical potential for the four global charges and to a three half. This is the this is what contributes to the saddle point to the main hot Reichenstein Hawking entropy. This term was obtained by Benini, Christophe, and Safaroni um, from the ABJ matrix model. Well, I obtained in collaboration with one, my former student Vimal. There was an undergrad student um, from Michigan, Zhao, and my colleague Jim Liu was this this um, expression here. This is the log correction. To that. You can see that it's quite clean, independent of this delta, it's just this number minus a half. Right. So the goal now is to understand this number uh, that we obtain field theoretically from, from the field theory point of view. But field theoretically, this is, um, this is the answer for the correction. Uh, with another undergraduate student at the time, Yuxin, uh, we considered uh, many other models of uh, ADS-CFT duals in which the S7 gets replaced by some other Sasaki Einstein manifold, B52, N011, or Q111. In all cases, the, the, the field theory is, is known. So these are more complicated uh, quivers. So you have, this is a gauge group, this is a color group, uh, sorry, gauge group, flavor group. Um, so they can be more complicated, but generically we get that independently of this, very universally, we get this number, this minus one, minus half a lot of n. For all, uh, for all this class of, uh, ADS4 CFT3 pairs. All right. So that was the free theory part. I'm going to now move to the gravity computation. So any question so far? Any comments? All right. So the, the gravity side, uh, the gravity side, so we are interested in these pairs. Um, the holographic 
due out to ABGM is, is the theory of N, N2 brains. Uh, they see that this singularity is a form of Z gate. So, and they live in 11 dimensional supergravity. That's, that's the dual of the theory. So what we want to do is, is to, well, the index was computed for ABGM with the topological twist. So we need to consider magnetically charged, as in, magnetically charged asymptotically ABS4 black holes. Uh, here's the a four dimensional description of the black holes I'm interested in. Um, so again, you can think of them for this purpose as a, some solution of n equal two gauge supergravity with this prepotential. Um, this is what uh, the team was asking before. So you keep, uh, you want to the fourth of the SOA. Um, here's the metric. Okay, this is the, the Keller potential. So it's some function of the, of the section, but, but the key thing here, you can see that for very large R, this is asymptotically ABS, then there's a horizon. Um, these are the magnetic charges. They, they are connected to, to the fluxes that we turn on to theory and there's no electric field. Well, in the previous discussion, there was no nothing about any two in sight. I mean, how does that come about? I mean, there was nothing about sorry? the Chern Simon model you discussed. Yes. You only mentioned U n cross U n and level k minus k, but there was no n equals two supersymmetry. No, no figure. Uh, and now you're talking about N is two. Why is that? No, no, no. This is a way. This is a simpler way for me to. I mean, I, the honest place for this is in in uh, in eleven dimensional supergravity, and this is just for me to write a formula that that fits in one slide. Mm -hmm. So I can view the solution. The full solution is is what we know. ADS four cross seven, embedded in eleven dimensional supergravity. I, instead of doing all that, I just show you. This to convince you that yes, you're probably talking about some black hole with magnetic charge that's mm -hmm. four dimensional point of view. All right, so so here I here's the formula for the entropy of this black hole. So it's highly non-trivial, it's a function of the magnetic charges. And you can see there's square root of this theta. This F2 is this product. So it's it's fairly non-trivial that this this can be reproduced with the the simple formula that I that I, that I show you. There, of course, you need to extremize with respect to this delta, and that's how you get the, the, the entropy. So my goal is to compute one loop corrections around this supergravity background. Okay, not the two, not the four-dimensional one. The four-dimensional one was just uh, for just just so that it, it can be shown easily. But I want to go now in eleven-dimensional supergravity and compute the corrections to. Uh, the one loop corrections to the to the entropy. All right, so I have I have my background, my black hole, etc. So I want to now allow for fluctuations of, of all the fields in the theory. So computing computing these fluctuations is equivalent to computing essentially determinants. They will be they would depend on the background, but it's essentially computing determinants. If I'm interested in computing uh, for a kinetic operator A. Uh, it is natural to define um, log of the determinant with this prime, which means essentially do not include the, the, the vanishing eigenvalues because otherwise your, your computation would be ill-defined. Yes? Just to make sure yeah. I'm with you. Uh, we are in 11 dimensions. We are in the... one loop. What is the background? So... The background is the uplift of the of the black hole that I show you. So this black hole can be unlifted, uplifted, of this n equals two uh, uh, supersymmetric black hole uplifted to 11. That's yes, your background. That's my background. Okay, thank you. All right, so I, I need to be careful with the zero mode. So, and, and then because I'm in curved space and I want to be diff invariant, uh, the, the standard approach to, the, to this computation is to use the heat kernel uh, whose formal expression is like this. If these are my eigenbases, uh, eigenvalues, this is my, my formulation for the heat kernel. Right. Now the heat kernel um, contains information about both the zero modes and the non-zero modes. So if I want to compute the determinant without the zero modes, I need to explicitly take them off or subtract them from the, from the heat kernel like this. Um, that's fact number one. Fact number two, the heat kernel admits the silly the width expansion. It's an expansion uh, in this parameter, small parameter tau. You can see that the leading order is, um, the leading order gives you this t to the minus d over two, which is the, the integral of momentum. So it's like uh, like flat space answer. 
and then it, it will get correction. So in fact, um, these coefficients, the silly the width coefficients are uh, combinations and contraction of the Riemann tensor, et cetera, that, that are known. They, they were established in the 70s uh, by mathematicians. All right, so, so let, let's, let's, because I'm interested in this um, essentially generalization of the Laplace operator with eigenvalues one over the, the size of the manifold, the, the natural dimensionless quantity that I put here in my cutoff is going to contain the size here. And now using the expansion, the silly the width expansion, this is what I what I have. Okay. But I am interested if I am in, this is a very complicated expression, but my goal is to look at only the coefficient of the log. Only that. There's only one term that, that contributes to the coefficient of the log. So I need this tau the, to be to the power zero. So n needs to be d over two. So I have the tau over tau. That's the only place that, that it can show up. Um, so that means that only one term contributes this term with n equals d over two, and this is its expression. Right? That's why it makes a, that's what makes a lot special. If I want to compute the full determinant, it's a very complicated, I have many terms I have to integrate. But if I am interested only in the, basically the log computes uh, the failure to be a scale invariant, essentially. That's why it's like an anomaly in this sense. If, if this is the only thing that I care about, there's only one term that contributes to that. Sorry, this is the dimension of your ideas uh, space time, right? This is this is a general story for, for any uh, space time, yeah. So if you had a, a black hole that is asymptotically ADS5, there would be no log correction according In a theory that is five dimensional, there would be no log correction, that's true. Yeah, all right. So now on very general grounds, I cannot contract my Riemann tensors in a way that is non-trivial if I'm in, in an odd dimensional space. That's another analogy with, with the, with the conformal anomalies that, that I wanted to make. All right. So let me summarize because there was uh, there was a few there were a few slides. So this number, the coefficient, not the number, but the coefficient of the log is very robust because I can change what I mean by cutoff, right? I can epsilon bar or epsilon bar ten times, but that would never affect the coefficient of the log. It can it affects uh, my my answer, but it doesn't affect the coefficient. So the coefficient is robust and is uh, cutoff independent, and that's why I can compute it using only low energy, low energy knowledge of my gravity theory. I don't need to know uh, what happens very high up in the spectrum. In all dimensional spaces, the, there's the part that comes from the, from the silly the width coefficient is zero. And that would be my case because I'm in 11 dimension. So overall, all I need to do is to worry about, um, well, okay, if I have the, the, the one loop part um, with bosons and fermions, this is what I need to do. And then of course I have to, account for how to add the zero modes uh, appropriately. Good. So now, specifically for 11 dimensional supergravity with a graviton, gravidino, and a three form field, um, all I need to really worry about is the, the, the zero mode. So this minus one is because I subtract them in the in the silly, in the thick kernel expression, but then I need to add them with the right uh, with the right power. Um, so that's that's going to be my contribution, and then of course I need goals because there's gauge invariance in these fields that I need to fix, and these are all three separate. All right. So now let, because of the three, the three form zero mode in in eleven dimensional supergravity, uh, let me explain a very important fact that was uh, clarified by among others Siegel in the eighties. So if I want to quantize um, a P form, a, a P. Of course, I need a p minus one form because there's a gauge, there's a gauge redundancy, p minus one. But once I fix that p minus one, the p minus one itself had a p minus two redundancy. So to quantize a p form, I need to to introduce um, a number of of goals. So this is what uh, Siegel called goals of goals. Uh, and essentially, you need a, a whole tower until until you're done to quantize a p form. So let me let me so to quantize a three form. Um, I need to form goals that are Grassmann odd, and then three one form goals that are Grassmann even, um, and four scalar goals that are Grassmann odd again. This is following Siegel's prescription for the three form. Now, the three form that we are interested in uh, cannot be, well, okay, so I, here I, I, let me let me remind you of a fact. In asymptotically ADS uh, 2M spaces, I, I have it, but I have it later. So if I have a space that is ADS 2M, 
Camporesi and Higuchi, there's a theorem that tells that there, in this space, there's an informed zero mode. So uh, in ADS4, there's a two-form zero mode, and that's the, the source of my, my contributions to this, to this computation. So, uh, but there's nothing else because uh, in particular, the, this, the three form cannot have a, a zero mode because there's, I would need a non-trivial one form zero mode in S5, in S7, uh, but that that's not allowed topologically. So there's all I need to worry about is this two form zero mode in a asymptotically ADS5 because S7, uh, we know the topology of S7. So basically, again, the only two form come from the two form goes uh, when quantizing this, this field. There's no other, no other contribution. Um, so there's a, there's a, this is the two, two form goes action. It's a, it's a bit idiosyncratic, but this I can compute. So I, I have to take out this two, this beta two is the way that I need to add it to the path integral uh, carefully. So I will, I will, it's also one of the things that Ashok Sen did for asymptotically flat. So what I need is to have it properly normalized. So this is a two form, 11 dimensions. Um, essentially once, this is, a, this is important in the sense that I am only looking at the scaling of all uh, length dimensions in, in my metric, in my, my space time. So I assume that the, that the metric with scales like this and, and then um, and nothing further. So with this assumption, I, I conclude that the contribution from incorporating this to form zero modes appropriately uh, has this beta two equals seven half. So that my norm, I have my properly normalized measure. Uh, and then uh, for my one loop partition function, this is the contribution. So here I make a little bit a little bit of a jump. So let me backtrack and explain. Um, in gauge supergravity in, AD, in ADS4, I can have, um, so, so let, let me one step uh, further back. So if you, if you study, um, if you study, um, super, if you study gravity, you know that there are theorems that Govern the, the 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 topology of the horizon. There's a beautiful theorem by Hawking and Rose that that limit the, the the horizon must be spherical in four dimensions. Now for gauge supergravity, um, this is in fact not no longer the case, and the horizon can be any topology. Uh, so the most general horizon that I can consider here has topology of a, of a Riemann surface sigma g. Uh, so I'm actually doing the computation for that, which is a slightly more general. Uh, but here I that's why I already. Uh, assume that the horizon topology has this number of, of two point zero one. So this is the answer of the for the one loop, um, one loop correction. And when I put that uh, again, the, here is a little bit more subtle. I, I was cavalier here in the paper. We have more details. So you should allow uh, beta to be on zero and then take beta to zero limit. That is the the question that is a little bit on the debate right now. But for this part of the of the of the entropy, there's no not a lot of discussion. And the correction um, of the, the, the correction to the one loop to the entropy, the logarithmic correction to the entropy comes out to be uh, this number. And this number precisely agrees in uh, with the microscopic result. In the microscopic result, I did it for the sphere S2. So G was zero and we had minus one half, but I could have instead of S instead of S2, I could have put it any uh, Riemann surface of genus G, and that then it will have completely agreed with this. Excuse me, how do you get this? Uh, I see minus G, one minus G. What are you adding this to? I thought log N only comes from one loop, I thought. Yeah, yeah. this is one loop. I, I did not write the tree level. This is the one loop correction to the entropy. At the tree level, is there log N correct? Uh, term? No, no, no. But here you say S1 loop is equal to minus three, this is the one loop contribution. I, I put oh, this in one loop. Oh, I see. L and N are related in. Oh, I see. Sorry. OK, OK. Yeah. I see it. So, so that, of course, I need to translate. Sure, sure. Uh, sure. I see it. Okay. Icing ground. Sure. All right. So this is this is essentially, um, yeah. So this is this is the, the main result. And in fact, I can very quickly generalize to all the other examples I had done with, with my um, master student, because for all these spaces, all I need to do is make sure that there cannot be any other zero form that contributes. And indeed, there's a theorem that seven dimensional compact, compact Einstein manifold with positive curvature cannot have a zero first Betty number. So there's no there's no other zero mode that can contribute. And then I get this agreement for this large class of ADS4 CFP3 uh, theories. 
Don't you run into some subtleties with the Riemann surfaces uh, of higher genus when you talk about fermionic zero modes and stuff like that? Uh, is it all under, under control? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, at least, at least at, at, at this level that I that I have checked, uh, yeah. For, for this this theory, there is no problem. All right. So yeah, I, I have some time. So in the next five minutes. So this was a class of ADS4 CFT3 where I use M2 brains. There's another class that uses M5 brains. So, and in that case, you have to wrap uh, your M5 brain on a on, on hyperbolic three manifold. So now I will not go. I go, I will not go through the through the details. They are a little bit more uh, intricate. You need to use something called 3D 3D correspondence uh, due to Gaioto and uh, and Google and friends. But essentially, it's it's a it's a simple way or a simpler way to compute the partition function of the theory. So you can either compute it. Uh, so of course, this this sort of um, putting an F5 ring on N3 give you a, a three-dimensional theory. And the statement in this 3D, 3D corresponding is that the partition functions in that theory can be computed using Chen Simon, right? Chen Simon, um, SL, SL um, NC Chen Simon on, on this N3 manifold, right? Now this hyperbolic three manifold have been studied by mathematicians. And I can, and so the Raysinger torsion, et cetera. All the, again, all the Lego pieces that I need to build my partition function I, are known, and I put them together in, in two papers, one with uh, uh, Domingue Gang and uh, Nagu Kim, and another with Francesco Benini. Um, and there, okay, you can see the formula. Um, so here's the formula uh, for the log correction at one loop. Um, this is from field theory, all right? And now B1 appears, B1 is the, the first betty number of this manifold, and that will that means that I I do have now to I, I need to worry about um, the contribution of uh, three form zero modes. But I, I will show you in one line here what happened. So there was a contribution that we computed before. Now I have a three form zero mode, and it will be here. So the, the three form will contribute the number of of three form zero modes, which is the two form times how many one form uh, zero modes I have. Uh, so this is the contribution. And when you add them together, it perfectly agrees with the field theory uh, analysis. So, all right. So good. So so I show you these two, two classes. And for those two classes, we can do a computation. But now let me show you a puzzle. Uh, in fact, we have to deal with this puzzle before we were able to understand uh, what is happening there. But, um, but OK, uh, I think uh, this is the more con concrete way to say. Um, the background is the following. In, as I said, to deal with the Strominger buffer black hole, Atrexen had developed a whole machinery to compute one loop corrections. And that machinery started by first generalizing the classical entropy formula, which was a way to, to understand higher curvature corrections to the entropy due to wall in, in, a, in a language that was very near horizon. And that was completely successful. So for every black, black hole that you can compute the, the classical entropy, this is, as I said, it's not completely classical because it gets higher curvature correction. But um, but this this was very successful also for ADS black hole. Right. So there, there's this paper, and I, I checked with um, with uh, Joel Gauss. Now the quantum entropy formula is the generalization of this formula that allows you to compute logarithmic correction, for example. For example, but um, the problem is uh, application to to so you're supposed to go to the near horizon. Um, <laughs> And compute there, but if you go to the near horizon of these ADS4 black holes, you will get some ADS2 region. And originally, we actually did the computation there, uh, which I can which I can now show you in one slide. So the the space looks like some and you know ADS2 cross M9 and M9 is an S2 bundle over S7 with this um, chain numbers, if you wish. Um, and now you can do the computation of zero mode. So ADS2 to ADS. When I meet some form zero mode. So here I have a one form zero mode. But on top of that, I have contribution from the graviton. There's a graviton zero mode here, and there's also a gravidino zero mode. So if you put all this together for this geometry, you get a different number uh, than, than the one that you get from field theory. And this number was also obtained by another group of former students of Ashok Sen. So this number is, is correct, but it's not a, does not agree with field theory. And for a while we went very very puzzled uh, about this. Um, so the main point then uh, we went on in this paper with uh, 
with my former student Marina and uh, okay. uh, so we went uh, we went on with with my former student another undergrad from Michigan and, and Victor Goulet, and we computed from sort of bottom up the ADS4 correction. So now let's not let's not look uh, at 11 dimensional supergravity. Let's let's try to compute what is what is happening here at the at the fourth dimensional point of view. They, again, as I mentioned, there are contributions that come from the silly the weak coefficient. Now ADS4 is even dimensional, so it does contribute uh, this local piece. And then there are global piece that come from zero mode and uh, an ensemble change. Uh, the contribution from the local that is non-zero mo modes. Uh, depends on the silly the weak coefficient and the fill with the weak coefficient can be written in a particular uh, basis when you uh, agree this is the basis that you want to use you could change your base using field redefinition but let's take that this is the basis um, and now what we did was go on and compute the contribution of, of all fields uh, that were more or less uh, reasonable for us to compute the scalar free framium free vector free gravitational Einstein Maxwell and also the n equal to gravity multiple. So for all of them, we compute these coefficients um, using, of course, the heat current techniques. So here's the table. That this is what I meant uh, low energy because I, I want my delta to be n times L. So that that number has to be uh, in, in the lowest uh, of the spectrum. Of course, in the in the asymptotically flat case, uh, I really had to keep only zero mass, but more generally, I, I, I can include these modes with Delta. So well, one, okay, this is an example for a, for a generic uh, random nostrum black hole. If you do the computation, you see that there are many, but the answer is quite complicated, very different from the top 11 dimensional answer. And, and that is something that, that is puzzling, but that's uh, something we want to clarify a little bit more. How is it that <laughs> the lower dimensional level, you have all these different contribution and at the top level, only the topological contribution, the one that comes from the Euler characteristic. Um, but one, one of the things that we, that we concluded is that, uh, so by computing the log, we computed the log correction uh, for it, they, the asymptotical ADS for black holes in, in minimal supergravity. The logarithmic correction of supersymmetric black holes can be non-topological, so can have terms that depend on the charges, for example, that we did not see in, in top-down models. Um, now, one part of, of this paper that was important for us is that if you focus on the local part, the part that comes from silly the wheat and part of stems in, in, the, in the Riemann tensor, et cetera, that part, if you take the near horizon limit, uh, it gives you the same answer as the near, gives you the same answer as if you were just looking um, from the near horizon geometry, right? So that was the, the thing that in our case was different but our case was completely given by zero modes, right? So, but if I'm looking at this local part, the local part is, is, is exactly the same. So the conclusion is that since quantum entropy formalism seems to be fine as, 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 as long as, as far as, as the, the local contribution is concerned, but in the presence of zero modes, then things are, are really uh, different. So the, the zero modes in ADS2 are quite different from the zero modes in ADS4. There's no, there's no other way to, to do it. All right. So yeah, so let me let me pause before I go into the third and last part of the talk. So any question about uh, so far, uh, any question about anything so far? The computations for you in the gravity side it was very important that your background is, uh, is Sasaki Einstein, right? It was important, yes. Yeah. How could you generalize that? Because, for example, you can uh, uplift black hole solutions uh -huh. to backgrounds in 10D or 11D. Yes. So that squash the spheres and yes, yes. Some, some. So violence. I could do. Yeah, I I can do. If if I know if I know the field theory, then I'm 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 motivated to go and and and, and do it. So it, it just happened that I knew a lot of field theory results. For these black black hole backgrounds with uh, Sasaki Einstein seven or this um, hyperbolic three manifold. So whenever I, if I know what the what the field theory prediction is, I I think I'm motivated to do it. I I, I love to do. In fact, as you will see, for ADS five black holes, 
in in ten dimensions we don't we don't quite have an answer. So that's uh, so because it's complicated, but it can be done. All right, so so, <clears throat> so if there are no further questions, let's 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 move on to the last topic. Um, so the last topic is is uh, is about the really the latest development in ADS black hole. So for rotating electrically charged asymptotically ADS four, five, six, and seven black holes, um, there is now uh, a, a very well understood microscopic description of their entropy, and it comes from the superconformal index. Um, so these three works basically more or less uh, simultaneously provided the, the microscopic entropy of ADS five black holes uh, using the superconformal index in four dimensions. So it's another partition function, supersymmetric partition function that can be uh, computed, but it accounts now for rotating black hole. That's a big, a big jump uh, in complexity. Um, so th this was, done first in 2018 for, for ADS-5 black hole, but uh, very quickly afterwards, it was generalized to ADS-4, 6, and 7. So I, I also, uh, with my postdoc, Junian, uh, contributed to this. All right. Now, of course, um, so a natural thing would be to say, OK, let's turn the crank and do the same computation. Uh, but that, that turning the crank is not as immediate. So I, I let, let me explain a different approach, which I actually believe it's quite, it could be quite productive. So because this, this number A over 4G is so universal, um, one should really think, okay, do we every time really need the, the UV complete description of this field theory uh, to, to be able to access uh, the entropy and some of its correction, or, or, or maybe we can get, uh, get away with, with not knowing the full UV theory and how it's some low energy, uh, low dimensional description. Uh, the example that I, that I like is, uh, so for the Strominger buff, of course, there was the brain technologies, but then there's also this point of view where you have some Virasoro algebra of asymptotic symmetries around the horizon, and that essentially is sufficient to reproduce a lot of the entropy. So that's where I want to go now with this ADS black holes. All right, so for let me, let me quickly um, go over the, again, this is a very similar partition function. So it's supersymmetric, so my Hamiltonian is the anti-commentator for supercharges. I have rotation, two rotation, because I'm in five dimension, P and Q, and then I have uh, global charges, right? So it's, it's again, uh, now 116 BPS states in N equal four, these are charges, this is the R charge of, of the theory, and then there are for that. So this, this uh, was computed to leading order by the, the, the three groups that I show indicated at the beginning, but, um, in, in collaboration with Jim Liu and uh, my former student, uh, Alfredo gonzalez Lexano and, and Jim's student, Jung Ho, we um, evaluated very carefully the superconformal index using two different approaches. So one approach takes a, some parameter to be small. It's like a Cardi limit in, in two-dimensional CFT, if you have seen that. Um, and, we, and we pushed the quantity to the leading piece that gave me the bekenstein hogan entropy, but we computed this log. And this is the coefficient. Then we took another approach similar to what I discussed before using the Bede Ansas approximation. And we also obtained the same, the same result for the lab. After, afterwards, um, there were work by um, Amaridi and, and, and company that reproduced our result. And, and you can see here, but uh, two other groups, uh, Kasani and Komagorsky, and Ardehali and Murti took our computation and, and, and understood that it can be also interpreted as some sort of uh, effective field theory expansion of the index. But everybody agreed that we were correct, that this is the log, this is the coefficient of the log. Now, as uh, as log police, uh, I should find a gravitational description, a gravitational explanation for this for this number. But as I said, I, I would not, I'm not going to go head on on that problem. I will try to uh, motivate a, a different approach. So the approach that I'm advocating or that, that we actually pursue um, so I have been discussing at this level, ADS-CFT for ADS-4 and ADS-5 black holes. But one can take a near horizon limit in this, particularly in this rotating black hole. And then you have a geometry that is kind of uh, locally ADS-3. So you can see ADS-2. You can think this as a U1 fiber over ADS-2 that will give you locally ADS-3. But careful because there are theta dependence here. I don't know, well, maybe not here, but in, in some other places. 
it's, it's a complicated geometry, but uh, locally for us, uh, this geometry enters in this class of per CFT that uh, Strominger and collaborator discussed. And, uh, and, and Chris here in particular was uh, had a, a two papers that describe how this applies to ADS black holes. So, so what, what I did with, with some of my students was essentially to revisit uh, this computation and check that indeed, if I apply curse CFT at this, at this level, I can completely reproduce the entropy of, of these black holes. And the, the advantage there is that of course, um, that with this, with this arrow, and I'm able to, uh, to, to reproduce the entropy. So let me, let me show you. The entropy of, of all these black holes, not just one, but all of them, they have similar uh, near horizon geometry. And with that data, I can compute uh, its partition function. So let me, let me show you this picture again. Um, the first part of the talk was a lot, of, a lot about the computation at the boundary, comparing with the CFT of the boundary. But if you go to a near horizon, there seem to be, at least there are enough ingredients uh, to have a CFT. Oops. A CFT at the, at, at the, in the near horizon and that CFT provides an explanation for the, for the microscopic, the microscopic explanation for the degrees of freedom. Now, what I want to do for ADS-5 is go one step further and not just use curse CFT to compute the big chunk, the, the Gibbons, the, sorry, the Bekenstein Hogan piece, but to go beyond and compute uh, log corrections using that CFT. So, what's the point? Let's take it. Yeah. Okay, so, so if you remember the, the leading piece, uh, okay, so if you have a, a CFT, the leading piece of, of the entropy will be the saddle point approximation to the, given the partition function. And of course, that is a CFT, it has some modular properties. You can read the, the density of the states. You can read it from here as a subtle point, knowing the behavior of, of the partition function for still small, small tau. Um, but you can also go beyond that and do also um, a Gaussian computation. So the subtle point plus the Gaussian contribution, which we computed uh, to obtain this, this minus two log of n which doesn't look like the plus log of n that I showed you before, but it agrees uh, upon changing an ensemble. So once you change the ensemble uh, from, it will be microcanonical to canonical, you will get uh, uh, that this is, the, this is the right uh, contribution. So, let me, okay. so I think with that, I want to summarize what I have done so far. So we look, first of all, I, I show you, uh, log correction for magnetically charged ADS4 CFT3 quiver pairs. So a bunch of uh, quiver theories whose gravity contains seven dimensional manifolds in this class. So for both, for all of them, um, the computations agree. Um, I also show you examples in which the ADS4 black hole appears not for because I use an M2 brain, but I use M3, M5 brain. And in that case, I use a, another tool, 3D, 3D correspondence to get agreement for all that class, including with first betting number different from zero. Yeah. Both sides of the correspondence agree at the log level. And then I gave you uh, a bottom-up approach to understand that uh, the top 11-dimensional uh, corrections, logarithmic correction are of a very, very special type. Um, but, and that allows us also to understand that at least the, 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 the local part really is independent of whether you compute in the full geometry or you go to the near horizon and compute. All right, then I, I talk about rotating ADS5 black holes. I explained um, that we obtained the log correction in the field theory side as a function of the per conformal index. And using a slight generalization of curse CFT, we can also make the log correction in that case um, agree. Now in ADS5, as, as, as Gabriel mentioned, there are no, there are no zero modes. So there's another theorem of Camporesi Higuchi that ADN two plus one admits no zero modes. So that's why here it, it really doesn't matter whether I go to the near horizon and compute or I compute in the full geometry. So ADS five in that sense is a lot simpler. However, um, the, the direct computation in type two B of the log is, is still outstanding. So that's something I have not uh, com completed, although I'm, I'm thinking about it with some of, some of former students. All right, so let me summarize my outlook. So I, I, I study ADS4 and ADS5. 
uh, the role of zero modes as so obstruction to go to the near horizon. Um, clearly, whenever there are zero modes, uh, that means that not all the degrees of freedom live in the near horizon geometry. And you need to think of uh, since quantum entropy formula as a formula that relates to the, I would say, more dynamical part of the of the contribution, not, not the full one. So the problem of type to be direct type to be computation, gravity computation of this block, uh, I have not it's still open. Uh, it is still open to, to have a more systematic discussion of curve CFT as embedded in, in ADS CFT. This is important because for a long time, ADS CFT have been treated as a as some, some sort of a, a trick that if you apply it, you, you will get the, the entropy. But now by embedding it in, in, in an honest the theory we, where we have some more control, perhaps uh, we, can, uh, we can learn more about it. Now, conceptually, uh, entropy is, is a concept that in our field has been evolving a lot, right? So in the 70s with Hawking, it was about some geometries that seemed to have uh, beautiful properties that look like entropy. So, but it was very geometric. Um, later it became with the Strominger and Bafa and, and, and this current work is really just a stab make quantity or, or an understanding of the entropy. But more recently, there have been a number of papers uh, and, and some developments using entropy as, as something uh, more quantum information theoretic for the, for the page curve, et cetera. So that I think is where we would like to go um, in, in, in this more rigorous ads cfp context. Um, so in particular, I have been, well, that, that's sort of open. Um, I did not, did not mention this work, but this is essentially what I'm currently uh, thinking most of, you know, spending most of my, my time on. Uh, I'm trying to understand, I have discussed from the, from the near, from the gravity point of view, that there's this near horizon geometries that contains ADS2. Um, it would be nice to understand how it appears in field theory. So if you take any equal force of Ian Mills and compactify it on F3, you get a theory, a quantum mechanical theory that I've been studying with my collaborators, um, Eileman and Turiachi, and, and we are seeing some aspects of SYK light physics that we would like to clarify. I think that's an interesting direction. Um, but okay, the, the important message that I have with this talk is the ads -CFT, by definition, is a, a completely unitary setup where you should be able to answer uh, many of these black hole puzzles, the old ones that we had, um, uh, and, and some of these new ones about uh, whether the unit averaging in, in gravity or not, in the path integral, et cetera. So now I think um, what one needs to do is, is just compute in this very concrete, uh, very explicit setup, compute. And so far, uh, I think the computations have been very fruitful. So thanks for your attention.